Um, is there anything else in air? We, we see that what we would consider here is the major components of air. Um, is there anything else in air? Well, yes. There's always other minor components. Okay, so you know most of of the air we breathe is nitrogen. The next most amount is oxygen. Then maybe there's a little bit of water, maybe not, depending on how dry the air is. But then what else, and how much of everything else? Well, as it turns out, um, the way we define mixtures. Well, excuse. I want to tell you one more thing. Um, well, the other minor components, excuse me, I, I think I want to tell you something else, but I'm going to wait to the next slide. Some of the other minor components um, oftentimes are pollutants. I'll tell you that in a minute. But the point I want to make right now is that um, um, stating the concentrations of these various substances, pure substances, in a mixture is how we define the mixture. Okay? Um, so whereas pure substances are defined by their name, for example, a pure substance is oxygen. Oxygen is a pure substance, and then I define it by its name, oxygen. All right? But mixtures, air, air is the name of that gas mixture that we you know, live in in our atmosphere, and, and the composition of it varies. So we have to define the mixture of air based on the concentrations of the substances that make up that air. Okay? That's why it's so important to comprehend this concept of concentration. All right, we use concentration units when we're describing a mixture. All right, we never use concentration units to describe a pure substance because a pure substance is pure. All right, so anytime you hear somebody describing um, some sub some mixture, some um, bit of matter um, using concentration units, you know that that particular um, bit of matter that they're describing is a mixture. All right, so let me help this make sense out of this. Um, all right, so for example, when we're talking about, you know, what are some of the other minor components in air, some of the other minor components in air um, might be ozone, okay, might be um, sulfur dioxide, um, carbon dioxide I have listed here, carbon monoxide is another uh, component of air, all right? And so what we'll find when people start talking about components of mixtures, for example, air, they use units um, to describe that. So on the previous, um, and, and so what we want to be able to do in order to make sense of the, of the uh, mixture is we want to, first of all, have some clue about what the different components are. For example, what is oxygen and what is ozone and how are they different? What is sulfur dioxide? What is carbon dioxide and how are they different? That we're going to have to get to when we start looking at pure substances. All right, but first, let's just take a moment to try to conceptualize the units. And what I mean by that is try to really have some kind of physical concept of what these different units mean. All right, first of all, up there, I said um, PPH, uh, 21 PPH O2. That's what, what does that PPH unit mean? That is um, the same, or that means parts per hundred. Okay, parts per hundred. That happens to be the same thing as per cent. Cent, of course, is uh, you know the Latin root for 100, so it's percent or percentage. All right, so parts per 100 is the same as saying uh, I can say there's 21 parts per hundred oxygen, or I can say there's 21 percent oxygen. And if you think back to that pie chart that we looked at at the very beginning of the um, talk here, oh, here's my pie chart. Let's see if we can flip back and find it. Nope. Oh, well, anyway. If you think about the pie chart, very beginning, it said 21%, and that was 21% of the whole, or 21 parts per 100. It's the same thing. So when we conceptualize PPH, you're just thinking of you know percent or per 100. And in this case, when we're talking about you know the per hundred, per hundred what? Per hundred total um, parts of air. All right. And when we're describing air. 
in most cases, we're describing air as um, the parts are molecules. Uh, for, the, for the most part, they're molecules. Um, argon, when we saw the, um, the chart for argon, let's see if we can find it back here. Oh, it's right here. Um, let's see right here. Nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and water are all molecules in air. Argon is an atom. And again, we're going to look at the differences of those um, in the next lecture. But anyway, the parts per 100, you're talking about parts per 100 molecules or atoms, bits of air. And the bits of air exist as either molecules or atoms. Um, what about ppm? 0.4 ppm ozone. ppm stands for parts per million. Okay, parts per million. And um, so that means that in air, there are four parts, or excuse me, 0.4 parts per million ozone. Uh, what about PPB? That's parts per billion. Okay. And uh, down here, of course, is percent, which would be the same as parts per hundred or percent carbon dioxide. All right, so we want to be able to conceptualize these units. All right, so let's try first um, conceptualize parts per hundred. Okay, so let's pretend like um, conceptualize means try to get a good model in your brain of what it is. Units shouldn't just be little letters that you memorize. Units should have some physical significance. Okay, so the concentration of um, let's see, uh, let's see which one am I going to do? Let's do uh, the oxygen. It said it was 21 parts per hundred. So if you have a beaker of oxygen and it's closed, otherwise it would all escape. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, of course, every model has this limitation. Oh, I can't talk and count at the same time. I see one, two, three. So you draw this along with me. How much do we have there now? One, two, three, four, five, six, sixty. Let me see. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Okay, there you go. There's 100 parts of gas in that particular container. I want to conceptualize um, 21 parts per 100. So in that container, I'm going to have a total of 100 parts. And of those 100 parts, 21 of them, and I know that I have 10, 10, 21 of them, and I'm going to circle 21 of them, would be oxygen. Now, of course, if this were a gas, would these parts be lined up in rows of 10? No, they would not. They would be moving you know, very quickly in all directions, bouncing off of each other in this container. But for now, we're just trying to conceptualize this business of parts per 100. All right. Now, on that first slide also with the pie chart, what we say? There was 78 percent, which would be the same as 78 parts per 100 nitrogen. So if I wanted to do that, uh, let me see, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 8, 8 is going to bring me up to all of this. That would be my 78, 78 um, parts per 100 nitrogen, 21 parts per 100 oxygen in uh, air, in a normal air sample. All right, now, what if I wanted to look at carbon dioxide? From the previous slide, it said that we had 0.04% carbon dioxide, which is the same as 0 0.04 parts per 100 carbon dioxide. So in this drawing, how could I get 0 0.04 parts per 100 of carbon dioxide? Okay. Well, I have one part left. All right. So conceptually, that's very difficult if I'm thinking of, you know, breaking my, you know, thinking of 100 parts and in every 100 parts, 21 of them are oxygen, 78 of them are nitrogen, 0.04 parts are carbon dioxide. So that would be if that, if I were modeling this as a carbon dioxide, I would have to break it up into 100 parts, you know, and take four of those parts to get it, um, to get the fraction of that line that would be the carbon dioxide. 
But when we're thinking about pure substances such as oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon dioxide, I can't break a, a carbon dioxide up into smaller bits because carbon dioxide as it exists as one bit does not change. Otherwise, it would change its identity. All right. So that's why sometimes when you're really trying to understand and use this parts per concept to understand um, units, it's better to express the carbon dioxide in a more meaningful unit. Okay? And a more meaningful unit would be parts per million. Okay? So a lot of times when we're looking at minor components in a gas mixture, Rather than using percentages, percentages kind of gives us a global picture. Rather than using percentages, we'll express those parts in units of parts per million or sometimes parts per billion, depending on the concentration of the substance, of the substance that is the component of the mixture you're talking about. All right? So mixtures need to be defined by their components and by the uh, relative and the concentrations of the components within that mixture. And the types of units that we choose to use depends on what makes the most sense conceptually and physically.